All right. Good night. Good night. We are inside, ladies. Right. So, welcome to one and all. Tonight's topic is parenting. And I'm missing one of the ladies tonight, but we are working with all the mothers we have on the live here. So, we have plenty of mothers on the inside tonight. Yes. Yeah, so, we have Lisa, Celeste, I'll be coming back in in a little while. And, uh, well, I don't know if Sonali considers herself a parent in a way. Right? We may, we may not have any children biologically, <laughs> but we have children. <laughs> so, for the mothers, the ones who push the babies out. Lisa, what does being a parent mean to you? Start with you because you are the well for no, right now you are the oldest parent on the life. <laughs> so what does being a parent mean to you? Good night, everybody. Good night. Um being a parent to me, it is wonderful, it is very challenging, it is a lot of hard work. You know, it comes like you make sure them eat and you eat after. You understand? Mm-hmm. And parenting, 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 you have to be prepared for it. You got to be prepared for it. You just can't jump in and say you want to be a parent. You need to something. You got to be prepared for Because your whole life changes. And when you became a parent, do you think that you were prepared? Honestly, at the start, it was hard. It was really hard. Mm-hmm. It was really hard. But with my mom's help, I got to understand it and let's go with it. All right. Okay. All right. Celeste, new mother on the block. <laughs> so, Celeste, what? Does being a parent mean to you? At first, it was challenging. Um, like I always wanted to become a mom, but mm-hmm. I didn't expect it to be so hard. I didn't expect the pregnancy to be so hard. It was terrible. But I love being a mom. I enjoy it. It's like the best okay. thing ever. <laughs> All right. Nice. Nice. I'm glad that you are enjoying it right now. Right. So, Abby is inside. Abby, I don't know if I don't think Abby is hearing us right now. So, um, Lisa, let me ask you what? So, we have the things we call it the good night, Mr. Shill and Coffee, that he's behaving these days. So, Abby, you hearing us? <laughs> Because right now, okay, we are not here. And I you am. come back. Come. Okay. Okay. All right. So she's hearing. Right. Good. So, Abby, what does being, what, you know, being a parent means to you? Oh, yeah. Parenting. Lovely. I mean, it have its good and bad. Sometimes mm-hmm. you may feel the commit crimes against the kiddies, but I mean, it's, bad. it's all worth it. Okay. It's all worth you it. You know, the little struggles here. It's all, all worth it. Yeah. Oh, all right. Good. So, this, well, some of you say it have good, bad, indifferent. And it have its challenges that comes with it. So Nali, so I know that you know biologically no yen for sure to any babies yet. But um when you hear parenting, like what you say parenting means to you. Uh, parenting good well for me, I would say parenting is a life changer 
Mm-hmm. From from what I've seen others going through and so forth and and well being an aunt and certain things changes, but I believe parenting is a life changer and is suddenly taking a full sense of responsibility mm-hmm. for another little human and ensuring that they become a productive a productive person in society, really mm-hmm. and truly. Right, right. Yes, so I'll watch with that. It is it is a very huge responsibility. Right? Now Lisa say you have to be prepared, but sometimes um you you're, you're just not prepared for it. Some persons don't plan their pregnancies, you know, they don't go through the whole family planning for things and they become a mother, a father. Right, and parenting involves, you know, it's not just about okay, you have a child and that's the end of it, right? You have to make sure that that child is supported throughout their, especially through childhood into adolescence, to becoming an adult that they provide emotional, social, financial, all the support that they possibly need to become well. We're not going to use you with independence as last night, but to become a responsible, so now you said productive, right? It has certain things that you know you need to teach, and not just by words, but by actions as well, for your child to really become the best that they can be when they are an adult. That they will have, yes, it is, you will be glad for them to come to you for advice when they get older, but you want them to be self sufficient, really and truly. Right. So now we have we have four different parents inside. Authority, authoritarian, authoritative, permissive, and uninvolved. Right. I do not know if you all remember us having that discussion on our real talk live last year. But those are the four parenting styles. And sometimes we think, okay, am I have you all ever questioned? Am I a good or a bad parent for the mummies? You all ever question yourself asking, am I a good parent? A bad parent, you'll have access. Lisa? Have you ever questioned your parenting abilities? Mm-hmm. Abby? Yeah, I've asked that. Have you ever questioned? You've asked that? Celeste? I've definitely. Have you questioned? <laughs> have you questioned yourself? Like, can I really go through this parenting thing? I know baby girl, she's still small. So you know they're all cute and, and nice in this stage. But when it comes to when they get, you know, they become the terrible to us, they say. Are you are you prepared <laughs> for everything for that plenty. comes with it? So Lisa, back to you again. Do you, if you ask your question yourself now, am I a good or bad parent? What will your answer be? Um, a good parent, because I try. A good parent. As I'm a good parent, Mm -hmm. because I try every, I try very hard to make them happy and you know so forth. All right, all right. So you're making sure that the children are happy. What else again that you think makes you a good parent? Like, you know, when you don't understand the school, you can help them with it to the best ability. Mm-hmm. If you want to give them a problem, I always tell my son and my daughter, don't be afraid to come to me to tell me anything. You know your mommy right. is your best friend. You know, everything mm-hmm. is telling mommy okay. So if they have to tell me something, they will say, Mommy, so so so. Like my son, putting your John, mommy, I can talk to you about something. And I will try the time and listen to him. He will laugh in mm-hmm. time and I will laugh at him. Because he's a teenager, 13, so you know, 13 years, that is, you know? So, yes. With having kids have been a parent, it is nice, it is challenging. and. When they ask questions, if I can't answer it right away, I answer it like before the day finish. 
Okay, you know? so let us say they ask. Let us say you know they ask you something, and you don't know because there are no children. Ask some questions, and it will be like, where does it come up? Where is some strange question from? And it, like, let us say they ask where babies come from, right? How do you know, they will ask because you really want to know. Okay, how well, do I you go about? Mm-hmm. Okay, well, my daughter Naomi had a project in preschool. Mm-hmm. Where babies come from, and boy, I laugh. I say, Lord Jesus, it's like, hmm. and then she says, "Okay, what happened?" So I put her down, I sit down with her, and babies don't fall from no coconut tree. Babies don't fall from no mango tree. And I told her, when well, me and Daddy love each other, two parents, mm-hmm. two parents come from together. Mm-hmm. Mommy has a vagina, daddy has a penis. Mm-hmm. And... That's how. <laughs> Abby, Abby wants to know if it's all. Abby wants to know if it's all that because you're saying that now you was in preschool. So it's like, Abby wondering, okay, no, maybe okay. I ain't going that extent at that age. So we see here, like, and it's saying learning as you go, mistakes are there to become better so you know parenting you might think okay yes it is maybe you can be prepared but really and truly you won't be prepared you could have all wherever you could have all the books you could go to different classes each child is different so you're gonna have different like, I, I i don't think anybody have any child as the, exactly the same but right Abby, but, um Chimika, i came out and told us straight i didn't hide nothing yes i laughed about it but I did not hide anything about it. I came out straight and she was able, very intelligent, and she went up in front of class and said what I told her. Okay, so no, what, but but what but was the project? Thing, though. Yeah, what what was the like project, the assignment in preschool about? Like what it was exactly? That was about where babies come from. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No, but that's what you did there, Lisa, is very good because even my godson he is poor. His mother told him the exact same thing, he explained it, and exactly. even with her niece as well. And the fact is that they know. So it's not to say they have misinformation. They actually do know. And mm-hmm. when they continue along that line, to say somebody go fool them and thief their head, it wouldn't happen. Exactly. They can actually so... go and say, no, that is not right. That is not incorrect, and all of that. Just mm-hmm. believe yeah. of to say like oh a stork bring a baby or daddy put and a seed in mommy belly um put a seed in mommy belly button and it grow and all mm-hmm. that nonsense is like be upfront with them I say be upfront from young. The one that went up in front of the class and said what she had to do. them she said was shy to say whatever. All right, so Abby, I when Lisa was saying you know what she told her daughter when she was in preschool um did you like at what age did you or did your children ever ask you at any point um where do babies come from yeah my daughter did at one point it wasn't it didn't mm-hmm. have anything to do with class really. right. uh, i think she heard, you know she repeat what she heard Mm-hmm. I mean, I kind of, I mean, I didn't go down that full-blown road because I believe um, I want to keep her innocence as long as possible, you know? I know what she's going to learn out there is going to be different from what she's learning in the house. But as far as I could control it, I want to at least keep that innocence as long as possible. And I think... And what... Mm-hmm due to that as how she grow and whatever she asked me i would kind of give it the pg version you know to kind of okay. soften it full raw you know all right so um so all right because okay so you mentioned about you know keeping her innocence as long as you possibly can and you know, just throwing it out there. Sometimes, you know, parents take long 
to have the discussion of good touch, bad touch, what sex is, and where babies come from. So much so, you know, they are you really they're trying to protect them that it it doesn't do them well. It just brings harm. So they a lot of times that's why you know a lot of times they will see because they're inquisitive. Um, they are going to school with others and they want to try. They are getting all this misinformation, right? They, it, it has a lot of teenage pregnancy, right? All because parents said, oh, I want to protect the child. And I don't think that they should know this right now, right? So, Andy, good night. So, he's asking, ladies, how do you define a good parent? How do you define a good parent? So, right, I was mentioning the four parents instead. Lion is saying doing your best is what matters most. So, we have authoritarian. That is the parent who is do as I say. They are very strict. They set very high goals, right? And they don't, and the communication is one way. So, they don't ever want to hear what the their child or children has to say, right? So the strict one-way communication, do as I say, not as I do, sort of thing, right? High goals. And then we have the authoritarian who is supportive. There's a two-way communication. So the parent will, they help show the child or guide the child in how to solve problems. And you know they really listen and lend that support. And they allow them to also learn from their mistakes. They allow them to make the mistakes and they set reasonable goals. Right? The next we have the permissive parents. They allow the child to make their own decisions. Is whatever it is you want to do, you do. Um, they don't set any goals. They don't set any rules. They, they just allow the child to do what they want. And then we have the uninvolved or negligent parents who is not just not bothered. So no goals, they're never wrong, and they leave the child to fend for themselves. Right? So, if it is, they could remember which parent, <laughs> which type of parent do you think you are? <laughs> Do you think you are a sorry <laughs> You could be all of them. No, but I could, it, like, like I said, it, was, it all depends. <laughs> so it are all you depends. uninvolved right. at times? Example, are you uninvolved at times, Abby? Meaning, meaning, all right, say so like a mm -hmm. weekend where I know no one's going out, everyone's going to be inside. I'm going to make sure it have quick quick meals quick quick meals so that they can prepare themselves mm -hmm. and i leave them to it I, I you know i'm i would consider that as my negligence and uninvolved where they get make their own breakfast own lunch own dinner you know saturdays for me do what you guys want clean up all the mess i don't care yeah okay all right we got time let us in here for this moment like it is share like so at what moment <laughs> all right so what are, are you they do okay so there's a saying that there are times when it is your child really just needs to listen to what you have to say they really have to do as you say right um but do you allow your children to like have open communication with you if it is they're having challenges can they come to you and discuss it express how they are feeling you know why it is they did what they did do you all have that open communication yes we have to i mean even though i allow her to be an individual i want mm -hmm. her to express herself so i have to give her that room in order to trust me tell me whatever on her mind regarding whatever so she know when to come to me because mm -hmm. i have days when i am the strict parent to talk to me listen to what i say and then have times where we would have that one-to-one -one. 
Right. You know, so I have to allow her that, you know, that time went to open up to me and tell me whatever without any repercussions. Right. <laughs> okay, so Lana is saying there are times where it's my way and then we do have that communication. So then let them know hey, there's what I have to do and then he will explain why after maybe. <laughs> right? So um what do you all so my question is what do you all think about punishment or what does the word discipline mean to you all? Because that's something that comes up a lot of times in parenting. How do you discipline your child? Or allow your child to understand what is right from wrong, you know, what is acceptable and what is unacceptable behavior. Before I before I lay the heat on your skin, I explain mm-hmm. why am I doing it. I always explain why I'm beating you. I don't just pick up a belt out of rage because they can't get damaged. So I would explain to them, this is why I'm going to beat you and you will going to get licked. So after I give them the explanation, then I give them a cup of slap, depending on how severe it was. And um, they would accept it and go their way. So I know for a fact they're not going to attempt to make the same mistake again. Okay. So what would have been the behavior that warranted the slap or whatever beating they get? What was the reason for giving them that type of punishment? All right. One scenario it had where my son... I had a friend staying over for a while and she was pregnant Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and she was in a bit of discomfort and she was making a lot of groaning sound due to her discomfort and my son he was around six seven at the time and he was like oh why this bitch don't shut up oh yes well, I know where he <laughs> get the word. Yeah, no, you know where he I got the word, or you don't. Okay. I know where he get because I don't use them words in my house, so it have to be outside in school. So I let them right. understand why I don't use those words in the house, and mm-hmm. I, I after explain why I don't pick up a bad habit from outside and bring it in here. Right, and then the disrespect that was to my mm-hmm. friend. You know, and mm-hmm. I had to let them have it. Yeah, I had he would never repeat that word ever again. At least All right, so let, let me let never. me oh, so Lion is saying he never had to hit his kids, right? Which well he wouldn't do he leave the legs to the woman. So Abby, let me find out something, right? Because I'm just thinking in my time if I had said that I would have got my it would I went I would I guess slap him out like one time it whether I had never had the explanation may have come after and not before. So which order did it go in? Did it go in the order of slap and then an explanation? Yes. Okay. Explanation. Explanation and then. And then. It was Sonali, too far I'm, to the, I'm asking you. Yeah. In your case, let us say, you know, you have a child or, you know, what would you have, what, what would have come first? What order? Sorry, I had, I had to pause because I, not to say that I got a flashback, but it took me back to the possibility of if that was me, I would already be dead. My God, food, really and truly. But <laughs> if that was me, and mm-hmm. I had either a son or daughter do something like that. I know the instant backhand would I just swing. I'm, and essentially, the instant backhand because my neck would have turned out instant 180 from hearing just that coming out your mouth to an adult. Or even if you're just mumbling it to yourself, instant backhand. But I know for a fact after that, I'll knock you out, bring you back up, put the ice on your face or wherever. We would have a discussion as to 
where does language come from? Where does emotion really and truly? Mm-hmm. But yeah. I know for why use that? Know, mm-hmm. But I know for sure it would have been an instant backhand to knock you out. Because that right. is a high level of disrespect to an adult from a child. Oh, oh, oh. Right. So Lion is saying the arms, the arms deadly. So let mommy do the hitting. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I have to be very careful over here because it do have sleeper agents in the school. Well, you know, so before I discipline my child, I have to make sure I'm hitting in a place where it would not, where I know them going to be disciplined, and it wouldn't be marked as an abuse. Oh. Yes, it has wow. sleeper agents. Right. That look. No. Okay, Ooh, so Lisa, let okay. us say, Lisa, so let us say you have you, you that situation with Abby. What would have been your reaction? How would you have responded to? What would you have done? Now you may come out and say something like that. What would you do? She's not the sound I get there, and I'm going up on that, not to the edge of the here. Because you need to have right. respect for your mom friend, whoever it is. And my grandmother doesn't get the eye, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, some some trend is this, I don't know. It's so it is a question mm-hmm. of how well is the parenting? Have you already set the rules, right? And do does the child or the children know what mommy and daddy expect of me? right so line is saying we need both parents working as a team that is lacking in our society right and that is true because mommy will have do one thing and daddy will do something and nobody in agreement who find now you shouldn't hit the child or no you shouldn't Sam, put them in a corner or no you shouldn't do this way you should do it this way right there must be common ground Decide and the thing of so when I ask the question, so anybody coming on the live, what does the word discipline mean to you? Or how do you even discipline your child? Because a lot of time when people hear the word discipline, they think about giving licks. Right? You're gonna get beaten. And you know, I mean, sometimes children sure, just get accustomed, it don't bother them, you know. It's like, okay, whatever, I get licks and go about with life and skipping through the tulips right it doesn't affect do any but it doesn't affect them positively in that okay they are going to make a good change some of them don't it's like nothing right and right for the past two weeks we've had about three deaths right because children were beaten Right? And you see when it says you are angry, for whatever reason, whatever the child did, and you are angry, and you hit them in rage, and you decide, oh, so you need a good cocktail, as we say in Trinidad, in the Caribbean, you need a cocktail. Some people say the child needs a good cocktail, that's what they say. Right? And when it's you do that in rage, it could lead to the child's death. And you don't want to be in that position. So before, and then the next thing, when it is children are beaten, they always think, okay, the way to solve problem is by beating. So when it is they go to school, they think, oh, well, to solve conflict, or what, the, the, what they need to do is beat, or fight, or cuss, and quarrel. You try to do something, they cuss them out. It's have homes like that. Because why? You don't know how to deal with it. Right? And a lot of time permissive and even uninvolved parents. That's how they are. And the, even the authoritarian parents, they set some high, high standards. And when the child will meet the goal, there's certain things that they can't even achieve themselves. They vex with the child. Right? So, besides beating, because, you know, now they say, well, it has so many sayings with this thing when it is they don't, you know, 
me the child with corporal punishment. You know, it's spare the rod, it's spoil the child. Yeah. We've been here this years upon years upon years. It have some parents didn't have to be their child for them to understand that they need to be respectful. Right? It parents have parents who they need to be the child to let them understand that, you know, you need to be even responsible because when it is you may explain child, this is what you need to do and then they do whatever it is they want. You deal with it in a you know a different way there are there are so many alternatives now right but of course we grew up in a culture baby when i get a good cocktail so lisa have you ever had a, any reason to beat a child right lion is saying kids know who they can get away with their mischief because mom doesn't talk to dad for whatever reason right yeah, it have cases like that. A lot of cases like that. So Lisa, if a child do something and they don't want them again, do you hide it from your significant other? What do you do? No, I do not hide it because it is something wrong. And when he comes home, he deal with them too. Or do you say, okay, because I know what else if you are like, but it's how some women, they will say, wait till the father reach home. Right, Sonali? What was your experience? Did you get the way till your father reached home? Were your mother dealing with you one time? My mother dealing with me and then when my father come home, he dealing with me. Exactly. So I, so I used to get double whammy. <laughs> Abby. <laughs> Abby, what's about you? <clears throat> Where uh, my mom was more the, um, the disciplinarian. Mm-hmm. And they hold. Yeah, my dad. He used to leave too early and come home too late to do anything, and then okay. to leave it for the next day, like mm. you know. But my right. mom would deal with us barely. Well, I'm mm. sure what mother is mother better, is better than daddy. So my oh, mother used to have two, my mother used to have to win coffee. All of us collect coffee already. And not just yeah. cuffing the shoulder or anything. If your face in the way you're collecting, it's in your face too. So oh, no, no, mother. Oh, oh, no, the most thing you're hearing is no way. No, my mother was one of those. You see, when them knuckles show, talk. Mm-hmm. That was all. You gotta be mad, mother, better than daddy. I used to be glad for the belt. I can hide them well. But yeah, that coffee is a different thing. Like I say, my father's hand was heavy. So, wow. it's have some persons, they will prefer that their, their mother discipline them or punishes them with some licks rather than their father. Because men really, their hands are heavy. Right? So, that's why like I say, me, I ain't going to do, I ain't give any licks. Because I know what they will get. Let the mother deal with that. Right? They have some mothers. They they waiting till daddy come home. They didn't really matter one time. And then of course it have those who will get the double whammy. So mommy <laughs> deal with you and when daddy reach home, he deal with you too. Right? And you know we are in a time where I think I don't know, this is just my observation. I think we have more permissive and uninvolved parents, really and truly. I don't know what you all think. Based on what you all are seeing, what type of parents and parents do you all see these days? I would say most of them are numb. Yeah. From experience and my students and them, I see a lot of that must be about 95% of them are either neglecting or from non permissive. So Hardly ever I yeah. saw any that was really authoritative or authoritarian whatsoever. When yeah. I was going to school, on the other hand, I came up with classmates who had parents that were authoritarian and permissive, but now it's more of a neglect for me. Yeah. yeah. From what I see. Abby, what, what are your experiences on that? What would you say? We have more of neglect. They don't care. 
Yeah, I mean, parents become so slack, I would say, that they, I, I don't know if they forget or they really don't care that whatever they say in front of the kids or do in front of the kids, so whatever the kids experience, they share with their friends in school, you know? Yeah. And when teachers talk about it, it's like freedom of speech, you know? That's the way how they are. They are individual, you know. So it's yeah. it's, it's a mess, right? And and the thing about it is, um, um, what it is, I recognize. So long time as a single, you would have seen a more authoritarian approach, right? Authoritarian parenting style. Like they're saying, some expect teachers to be the new parents. That is true. So they find the teacher need to teach them, let them learn whatever it is they're doing in school, plus they want them to make sure they eat, they are well clothed, they're supporting them emotionally, everything. They want the teachers to do everything, right? So yes, that is, that is true. Some parents want the teachers. Yes, it does spend the, mo- uh, the majority of their day in school, but parents need to buck up. They really need to, right? Um, what is it my my mother used to say because she she says she blames her generation for what it is like now because what's happened because they experience the authoritarian parenting style they felt that they needed to be easy on their children right well that didn't happen with me right that didn't happen with sonali <laughs> right but it's have a lot of homes where the parents whether it's mother and father or it didn't have that balance persons were not on the same level you know they weren't on the same wavelength yeah like the same parents get soft right they want to be their children's friends it's either you are a parent or you are a friend now some person may say yes you can be a friend to a child is one or the other Right? As a parent, yes, your child can come to you and feel comfortable to you know, express themselves whatever challenges they are having. You know, that you don't need friendship for that to happen. Right? I think friendship so no. What's that? I know I'm I'm thinking the friend thing will gonna come after. After you have stayed, after you have done your job, you know. Do your parenting as best as you can. They reach of age. That's when the mm. friendship come up. Yeah. Okay. You're gonna be a parent all your life. Hence the reason pa rent. You only renting them for that stage. So after they reach that stage, you can't parent them anymore. So I would say the friendship will come after. Okay, Lisa. What what do you say to that? You say falling asleep on a sailor. <laughs> oh, I'm the one supposed to be sleeping. <laughs> um, to me, okay, I will put it in my own words, right? Mm-hmm. I do what Abby say and what Sonali say, but to me, as a parent, you must have an open mind. Because you can't expect your child to, it have like some homes, some children cannot talk to their parents. They cannot come to the, it come like they will go to the teacher and tell everything. Mm-hmm. You know, that after, okay? You know, like if there's something to tell you, like if they're being bullied at school, they wouldn't tell you. You end up telling some uh, other parent, and then when the other parent notices this child and tell you, they will come and tell you, and they want to know why this child don't have the con- communication with you. They tell you when they are being bullied. And not tell you about it, right? At right. That aspect. Yeah. I mean, it can have so it have so many reasons why the child may not tell the parents. It have the plenty different reasons. So, like I say, boys becoming your men need that strong meal, but mothers spoil their boy children, right? So it have yes, there are cases where mothers. Lisa, like that is you, Lisa laughing. <laughs> Lisa is laughing. I can, I can get a point. Like a guilty. You're guilty of oh. that. Oh. My right? And it, it is. Mm-hmm. 
Mas isso não já é. definido, né? As ações de right. opinião. But they are things you expect. Right? Mm-hmm. Because they go through um, puberty. Puberty. And they start to ask questions. Like, you just start asking a lot of questions. And you will sit down, mm-hmm. you will laugh. I, as a parent, I come out raw. I don't hide nothing from Ojana at all. I talk in raw. Because right. when you're talking with your friends, you're talking what you're talking. When you're on YouTube, you're watching whatever you want on YouTube. Right? right. I come out raw. The first time I told him, um, something I tell, tell him, like, oh God, mommy, man, you have to say it so. I said, because they have good sense. So I came out raw something. And we had a, a whole mother's son talk and the step at the gallery and we talk about all our talking and laughing. And I'm mm-hmm. like, happy mouth, people saw the laugh, you watch me. He get up the next one, he start to laugh. Oh God, mommy, nah, boy, not so bad. But when you come out like that, you feel comfortable, you know what you're talking about, you're not hiding. You know, right. you tell them how you, how, what I went through during PBT. Because PBT right. is a normal. Everybody has to go through it. My daughter has to go through it. You know, there, there it comes in the changes with your voice. You know, sometimes I would get like, Mommy, I'm like, oh gosh, this boy voice. So <laughs> I smile when I hear the heavy voice. You know, it, is, it makes me feel proud to see he has reached his era, the stage, 13. Mm-hmm. You know? When he has this conversation with his friend, he come out my room, go and talk to his friends then. If it's not coming in his room, oh God, now you need privacy. She'll come out and sometimes it's like a big joke sometimes because, you know, it's, it's a kid. But, right. as a parent, but if he does, does let, me, let me ask them. something. Let me ask something, Lisa. So if it is he does something that, you know, you know is not acceptable, right and so said how has he ever done anything that you know you needed to um let's say discipline him you didn't allow him to just continue with that unacceptable behavior and i think that is what lion was talking about too because sometimes when it is they do something that is unacceptable or what me says wrong mothers they brush it off they just brush it off nah leave him now you know he's it, nah he's a, just a boy Boys will be boys, you know those type of things. You see, the boys will be boys. It have things. Yes, let the boys run around. Let them go outside. Let, it have things. Yeah, yeah, you could accept. But then there are things that you really. Let us say he's sexually. Again, he wants to make advances. You tell him no, but yes, he's still pushing himself up on the skill. Mm. Right, right. How will you handle? something like that hmm, well okay it had a time where he was very rude to me he chips at me mm-hmm. right and i slapped him i took mm-hmm. away all his games all every one and plug it mm-hmm. and he was told for a week and i didn't care if he was a person he was he was not the parent and i the child i am the right. parent and you the child i brought you in this world and no matter how tall you are, I could boil you back down straight to Baji. Right? Yeah. Mm. So, stop them and say, Mommy, it's too strict. But I said, Roja, when you have your own kids and you have to deal with it, you'll realize where I was coming from all along. So, when he does it, right. I told him. Yes, and I slap him very hard. Sometimes when you slap them, sometimes you will feel sorry afterwards. But no, you don't feel sorry because you have to them with, with boy children. There's a way you have to deal with them. You deal with boys different, you deal with girls differently. Okay. You know? So, if it, if it's new to me, like mm-hmm. when you chips at me at a time, I slap him in his mouth very hard. Because I can carry for nine months and you want to play his chips in at me? No! I'm not thinking that. I'm not. Right. So, my way of calling, I will take away all your PC games, everything, and pull log it. Mm-hmm. Don't take your slap. Let your phone and take it into the phone. You can hear how it is. You can slap how much door. I see parents here. Like, and he can be answering back. He mad. Hmm. 
mm. right? So, so I the lion, lion was asking yeah. about the the birds and the bees, and when it is they are going, and, and it don't make sense to wait in, as the saying goes, wait until they hit in, and there were all these feelings, all these sexual excitement, you know, everything, and mm. the one I what going on. Don't wait till that starts, and then you don't know how to deal with it, right? Mm. The writing before I even had the opportunity to talk with them, yeah. Um. So, so something else when I ask. something else. Right. So we have the birds and the busy sex talk, and we have where what is acceptable and unacceptable behaviors. So when it says your boy child, okay, and what about? Well, I I go I be like lying now. The gender roles. <laughs> So it have some it have some cultures that don't believe boys should be cooking or the husband should be cooking and cleaning. Um I would like to know you lady. Do you think that your boys should learn how to do these things? Do you only do you let both your children do chores? Whether it's making up their beds, sweeping, but what chores do you have your children? Abby, what shows it? But it, I know you're saying our weekend, they definitely have to organize whatever it is they want to eat. But what? Yeah, um, I would let them do the cooking, the cleaning. Yes, I would let my son clean the bathroom. You know, mm-hmm. I would let him vacuum. I I have to teach him. He have to learn to do this by himself. So he even have to depend on no female to come and do it for him. Because he may not be lucky to find a female to do it for him. So, best thing to do is learn to do it yourself. So, when you are lucky to find that one, then you don't have to do it after that. But you have to be able to survive in this world by doing stuff for yourself. So, yes. Right. Lisa. <laughs> Or it's spoiling them rotten. They have to they have to lift a finger. What it is? <laughs> Me and my kids' room, they yeah, are this that I'm at down chores. Every day you do something, you have to do your chores. Right? If you have your pet, you feed your pet, you feed your have your own bathroom, every day you do it. And mm-hmm. I will, my children them sort out their own selves. My son will sort of his uh, himself and his sister. He will try an egg. Is that what I feel? Um, my oil, he's done my oil, he's done <laughs> everything because grocery is costly, <laughs> but they both have their chores. I just mm-hmm. want to tell my son, make up your bed, I don't just say that you need make up your bed. They have a routine, so, okay. like when, like, if you say cousins come over, they go, yay, until it's like you have them in a game, nah, because, you see from preschool, they know they get up early to the prayer to make up your bed. You do always believe before you leave home your bed and made up your room clean. So when you come back home, if anything happens to you and people carry in your bedroom and room clean. You know, they 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 are good. They have a routine. So I don't have a problem. Make up your bed, wash wares. Mm-mm. Okay. So now we know yeah the children is but in no, listening, listening to Lisa, it it took me back honestly and truly. I can remember a discussion my parents had, like they were just reflecting. My dad believed that children from young should have chores because he grew up in the country. He had chores from young. My mom used to be like, leave them, especially for the Saturdays and Sundays, leave them the mm-hmm. little, let them sleep and all of that. It wasn't until I got older, must be around 11, 12 or something. So, until then, my mother was like, okay, you need to start doing chores and so forth. And I used to rebel against it because I wasn't in the habit of getting up to do chores. And I was fortunate enough for a few years to have help doing the chores when my brother was still home. But when he left to go university, it was just me alone. So it was like thinking yeah. about it now it's like yeah i think my mother should agree with my father 
in having me doing shows from young, really and truly. Right. Mm-hmm. When but I got Lion into that team, yes, it was like, Ooh, yeah, it was hard. I yeah. hated it. I really hated it. But I'm um, so in the yeah. custom of it now. I can't stand to see a dirty place now. Definitely. So, mothers on the live, will you accept your boy child being gay? Lisa, you heard the question. Mm-hmm. Will you accept? Will you accept if your dear son no brings answer. home another male and no saying mommy? Honestly. Mm-hmm. Okay. No answer. No answer. <laughs> Hey, that is the answer. Yeah, well, no, 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 get flagged. I don't, you know, I will talk my mind. I don't want this this life to get flagged. So, well, we know what your answer is. <laughs> so, no matter, we know what your answer is. I don't have to explain. Yes, Lisa. I wouldn't lie. I wouldn't talk about this. Honestly, basically, it boils down that it's your son. Mm-hmm. Right? And no matter whatever rule he choose or how he feel, he will always be mm-hmm. my son. I will accept it. Yes, yes, as a mother, we hurt because you know, we are accepting the daughter in law thing, the grandchild thing, you know. But honestly, straight okay, I will accept it and love him the same way. And I will even put him out and ball at him. Yes, it will hurt me, I will cry, but I will accept it. I will accept okay. it. Mm-hmm. All right. Um. So, Lisa is accepting. We don't know what Abby going and say already. She doesn't say she well, wants the life get flashed. I didn't make the mind, you know. Yeah. And as we have our values and stuff, stuff, whatever. I mean, when you reach up that age, so you could choose whatever you want to do. You know, go out there and do what you had to do. You had to live your life at the end of the day. But once right. in my house, under my roof, in my mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't know. Sanali. I don't have any children as yet. So but I when I have, have so. no. <laughs> so let us say you have a boy child, right? And he say, "Mommy, this is my boyfriend or my." You know, significant other, you know, of the same sex. How do you think? Lion are the your girl child as well. So let us say, you know, your boy child or your girl child, they are a homosexual. How will you? Honestly, I don't know. Really and truly, I don't know because in, I'm open minded enough. Mm-hmm. And like Lisa said, you are my child. I brought you into this world. I might have my values, but you could grow up and have your own. Because the right. thing is, once I raise you to be a decent and honest person in society, if that is who you love, okay. Just make sure I bring my grandchild. At least keep a, right. keep a line going or something. Now, if you had to do a little surrogacy or something at least do surrogacy keep my bloodline going or at least or something or at least my family name or your your father family name or something going please that's all i have okay all right right so a lot of open-mindedness there i'll be yes, so open-minded if you eat my food and i'm a roof i clothe any i feed any i provide any shelter nah, nah, nah. right <laughs> If you want to go and handle any own business, no problem. So the thing about it is with the parenting, yes, you know, you don't make the child's mind, but you do influence. And yesterday we talk about being independent. Another thing is the influence. And we are all influenced by our parents, our peers. We are influ- we may think that we are not influenced by what is happening in the society, but we are influenced, right? And yes, it is we we will do things that may inflict, they may choose some things, they, they decide what they're going to take from us and what they're going to leave behind, just as we did. 
there are things that we take and there are things that we leave at the side and there are things that we take that we really shouldn't take and we need to unlearn them right so you know as parents i know i'm not a parent but i do have um children that call me mommy right but the thing about it is you know we really want that we make possibly have positive influence on children it may not be yours biological biological or not we want to have a positive influence and respect i know it's a big thing let it be known that once it is a we're not demanding respect from the child we are earning that respect and sometimes i know people may like well i could be a mother why i'm the mother. adult here and they have to respect me you want that children they are respecting you because they know they look up to you and they know that they can come to you you're not demanding you're earning that respect from them and once it is they can do they can earn that respect or well and good um as for the parents they could either be a pair you can't be the two and really and truly it should be that parent supporting that child in the how you're supposed to right providing all the support necessary for them to become productive and responsible adults in society even children young adults as well right so i mean they growing up they want when they go to school they're responsible they're respectful they're doing what they're supposed to do it doesn't matter what age they are yeah so it was a nice it was a nice discussion yeah it was a nice one um look out for the sweaty sunday gym edition tomorrow and we'll be back again at it yeah and all the best everybody had an out on tuesday yeah so we're going <laughs>